good morning. Uh, I just drove up to uh, the Wrights Lake area to do a hike on the Barrett Lake Jeep Trail. I had to park at the uh, Rockbound Pass parking lot and walk to the trailhead because there's no parking at the trailhead. Because the trailhead is actually a road for Jeeps. And damn it, um, I usually check this before I go, but the road is actually open. The Jeep trail is open. So I might see a bunch of Jeeps on the road today. I uh, usually try to hike this this road when it's closed. It's closed a lot of the time. But you know, it wouldn't be so bad to visit some people on the way up. Um, nobody has reservations for backpacking in the area besides me. Um, and I'm headed to Top Lake. I did this trail a couple years ago to Lawrence Lake, which is a beautiful place. But um, Top Lake is one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's one of those lakes that I went to because of, of a description in a book. And uh, it described the lake as uh, unique because it has terraced pools on the higher end of the lake. I don't, that was a long time ago. They may not even exist anymore. But uh, Top Lake, is, I assume it's called Top Lake because you feel like you're on the top of the world. The, uh, the land just drops off all the way to the Sacramento Valley. Hell, it might even have cell reception up there. I don't know. Um, but it's going to be a rough hike. Didn't get a lot of sleep. I'm not in the best shape, but I'm very determined. <laughs> um, I've been visualizing this for a couple days now. The goal being to uh, leave the house by 9, get up here by noon, I mean on the trail by noon, um, setting up camp by 5. All those are doable. Um, I left the house seven minutes late because I forgot a little tiny thing. Um, but I am uh, on the trail at 11.37, 23 minutes early rare for me. So hopefully that means I should be able to make it to Top Lake by 5. It gets dark around 8. I want plenty of time to relax and set up camp and do all that good stuff. Oh, here's Dark Lake. And how appropriate that the, uh, the sun just went behind a cloud. Um, I meant to bring my, my uh, new hiking umbrella but it's not something that I'm used to bringing these days. So, it got forgotten. And it's a shame, because it's gonna be pretty hot today. Um, there are some little puff clouds up there, so I could get lucky with little puff clouds. I'm hoping. And here we are at the gate. A lot of a lot of chainsaw activity back there. It'll be nice to leave that behind. So your car has to get through this just to get on this road. And as you can see, it's not that easy. Plenty of uh, wheels pushing up against the up against it here. Trail running event, September 8th through 12th. There will be people jogging through here. That will be really annoying, but I'm not going to be here. Good. Please respect other campers. Know before you go. No campfires. Blah, blah, blah. Man, Jesus. Uh, it just never ceases to amaze me how difficult this is to get over. It's hard, hard enough to walk, but... This is the first 20 feet of the road. And it would take me forever to negotiate this, even if I had a Jeep. And only six and a half more miles to go up to Barrett Lake. First junction here. This is just a cut off over to the um, Rockbound Pass Trail towards Maud Lake, etc. This is my first uh, bit of a clearing here. Get to see some distant views and lots of clouds, which I'm very grateful for. It's rather humid and it's rather warm. Pretty hot and sweaty on the trail, but every bit of shade, every little cloud helps. 
Um, I uh, saw some people right at the beginning of the trail that day hiking. Didn't go in very far. But they said they didn't see any Jeeps. They've been here over the weekend, didn't hear any Jeeps. Don't know anything about anybody taking any Jeeps on this trail. So, that's good. I'd rather... I, don't, I wouldn't mind uh, running into some people uh, in Jeeps doing the trail. What I'm worried about is uh, um, people in competition from campsites. Because, hell, if I had a Jeep that could go to Barrett Lake, I would go to Barrett Lake and then park it there and then backpack from there. I assume people do that. And if there's a bunch of people parked at Barrett Lake, then I know there's a bunch of people up in the backcountry. But it must have just opened, because I checked not that long ago. I checked like a week ago, and it, it was closed still. So maybe people just haven't been able to get their plans together to do the trail yet. Anyway, I'm in the blissful up and down section of the beginning of the trail. It's a very nice way to get into the rhythm of a trail when you don't have to climb uphill. Indeed. Uh, I mentioned I didn't feel that good, particularly. But I don't feel that bad, either. I don't feel particularly tired. Although, I'm really hot and it's... I'm not even in the sun. So, we'll see how I do. I, one way or another, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it to Top Lake. It's the condition that I'm in when I get there and the time that I get there that I'm concerned with. But I will get there. You'll see. Well, I made it to the bridge. Almost a mile in so far, and I'd like to say I, I haven't broken a sweat yet. Which, that's entirely untrue. I'm sweating like a pig, but I haven't been working that hard. It's just warm and humid. And where's the... How could you lose a Jeep road? Oh. They uh, moved the road a bit to uh, for the bridge. I saw the old road back there a ways. Damn. You ain't getting my car to climb up this. Jesus Christ. I'm not sure I'm glad I'm just walking. gone a couple of miles, maybe a little more, but uh, it's humid and I'm really hot, so I needed, I needed to take a cool down break. <clears throat> and as soon as I started looking for a uh, place to, to break, little raindrops started falling. This is interesting. I didn't actually prepare for rain very well. Um, I've got a light uh, rain jacket, really light, <clears throat> and a rain skirt, so for my body, but I don't really have anything for my backpack. I have um, a garbage bag. Uh, that's always in my backpack just in case I need it for something. And um, Rain protection is one thing I might need it for. However, maybe the rain skirt can go over the top. I don't know. I suppose I should check that out before I get moving again, because there are a lot of clouds. It could rain. Probably not. Um, but I should be prepared, because I do not want to carry... I don't want my backpack to be really heavy from rain. Um, trail is uh, newly maintained. Uh, there have been Jeeps over it recently. It's very dusty. Uh, luckily, I'm not inhaling a lot of dust. Um, it's not too breezy. But thank God the sun has not been out much. Uh, the sun came out a little while ago, and I started baking, and I, and I realized I'm not in the best shape here. Um, I'm fine on uh, the, the flat ground and downhill, but uphill makes me tired and hot and weary. Uh, so I decided I needed to cool all the way down here. I think I'll even take my shirt off and dry it off. Take a couple minutes, drink a lot of water, get some energy in me. 
and start at it start at it again maybe i won't make it to top lake well, that's a horrifying thought i have to get past barrett because i don't want uh, jeeps to wake me up in the morning tomorrow <laughs> that would be horrible um so that's how we stand here we're doing all right so here's the view i was waiting for slowly climbing i'm well, i'm climbing up but uh, I got a much better idea of what I'm looking at here than last time. Alrighty. I believe it's raining. <laughs> Damn it. I believe right in there is uh, Hemlock Lake, Lawrence Lake below it, or maybe Lawrence, no, not Lawrence, what was that? What's that lake called? Oh hell, I can't remember. I'm too tired. Uh, the three lakes, Hemlock Lake, Smith Lake, and the third one. I think the third one is down here. I think Hemlock is up there. And Smith, I believe, is eh, over that hill, but short of the Bear Mountain. All right, now that i got water falling on my camera, let's hurry this up. Um... That over there is Twin Lakes. You recognize that big rock there. Well, here's an interesting stretch of the road. Yes, this is steep. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I mean, doing it in my car is out of the question. Doing it in a stock Jeep seems to me also out of the question. I don't know. But uh, it seems that, this, <laughs> that that might be uh, an area where uh, cars really get messed up because I just noticed this thing here. Didn't notice this last time I came by here. Somebody created a, uh, a pit to work on your vehicles <laughs> when you bottom out and ruin your transmission. Um, still continuing, it's very steep right here. But uh, we're approaching the biggest or most important repair job that I think is actually um, uh, repair was required so that the trail could be reopened. It was this meadow here was in such a dire strait, dire situation. Wow, <laughs> they've really worked on this. Uh, this was this was brand new when I uh, the road was the rocks was brand new when I first. Uh, when I came last time, um, it had not even been driven over. It's settled now, and it's uh, it's much easier to walk on. You're not as likely to twist your ankle immediately. And of course, this very odd landmark here that is still here. I guess they uh, they're not going to try to clean that up. It's just part of the landscape now. Well, how you doing, ladies? I wasn't expecting to see anybody here. Well, we. <laughs> Where'd you stay last night? Where did we stay last night? Yeah. Uh, Lawrence Lake. Lawrence Lake. Are you just coming in? I'm coming in. I'm going to go up to Top Lake. Oh, we went to Top Lake this morning. Is it nice? Beautiful. I, I, I went to Top Lake about 25 years ago, but um, I completely forgot. Lawrence, it's, you know, it's a climb up, but... Short. Short. It's just short. <laughs> Hard, but short, yeah. Well, here I am at Barrett Lake. It seemed easier than it should have been. Every little uphill hurt. It made me very tired and very hot and very sweaty. But thank God there was no direct sun almost all day long and occasionally even a little breeze. The uh, temperature is around 75 degrees. It could have been closer to 90 if the sun was out. Thank God. But it's raining a bit, so uh, I'm kind of hiding under the trees here to avoid getting wet. And maybe I will have to actually think about doing something about waterproofing myself. Well, this is a nice spot.
I'm already off trail. I forgot to mention fast moving bird over there. I forgot to mention I ran into some women coming back in the other direction. Women that spent the night at uh, Lawrence Lake. And they said it was beautiful. And they said that they went up to Top Lake today and it was beautiful and there was nobody there. So there should be nobody at Top Lake. They did say, however, that they saw a tent on the far side of the, the usual campsite at Lawrence Lake. And that they heard noises last night. So that there, there were two camps here last night. One seems to be remaining. However, they might just be packing out late. Who knows? But it looks like I should be able to get Top Lake to myself. Um, the important intel that they gave me was that I remember um, last year, or last time I was here a couple of years ago, uh, walking up to the dam from the campsite and wanting to get on the other side of it just to see what was there. But it was just a little too hard. I decided not to. And there's a lot of trees have fallen since then. Uh, and these women uh, told me that they could not uh, cross the dam, uh, cross over the creek at the dam. They had to go downstream. And I suggested, well, why don't I just cross the stream at the first opportunity? And that's just what I did. The, uh, the junction to the um, trail is just right up there to the main trail that goes up to lake number five and lake number three. And the, uh, the Lawrence Lake Trail follows the creek, obviously. So I'm gonna follow the creek, but on the other side, and my way to Top Lake should be obvious once I get up towards the lake. So I got this other little rivulet to cross over and then I'm gonna start heading up. And I guess I'm feeling all right. I sound better, don't I? <laughs> um, oh, isn't this adorable? I have to get a still of this. God, I'd love to stay here. Hmm. That's not happening. Oh, I'm up above beautiful Lawrence Lake. I'm not that high above, but my my route is clear. I'm very tired, <laughs> but I made it this far. I know I'll make the rest of the way. And uh, there was lots of raindrops falling on me between uh, Barrett Lake and here, but not enough to be of concern, but just enough to cool things off. So. I have been one lucky hiker that things are so cool here. Staying high above the lake was indeed the right thing to do. And I'm avoiding all the steepness here. Um, I'm following a pretty well used trail. There's a couple of uh, critical trail markers that uh, kept me going on this traversing route instead of just climbing straight up which was my inclination at that point. So I decided to let them be, they've, they've served me well. And I think following this little greenery here is gonna serve me well too. And I also wanna note a campsite over here. And another one over there. I never even got that far around the lake when I stayed there. Um, I think I got that far around the lake and then just hiked back. I uh, can't quite see my campsite. That's to the left, just out of view. The main campsite. Good to know, there are more than one campsite at the lake, just in case I get, get skunked there someday. Okay, I got another half a mile or so to go. Not much. Perhaps you can understand why they call this Top Lake. Yeah, I feel like you're on top of the world. And on the way up here, I could see ridge after ridge after ridge after ridge. But I was so beat up and tired. Um, all I could think about was getting here. <laughs> I was, I am so tired. Uh, I took care of the uh, really important stuff. I got water, I uh, ingested some emergency and had some jerky and sugar. I just, I needed food right away. And I got my tent set up, I got uh, water filtered, and now I'm sitting in my chair. I can finally relax a little bit. Um, did my laundry, cleaned up a little bit. And I got some stuff to say. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the important thing. Um, it was a tiring hike. I really wasn't ready, and I knew it. Um, but... One way to get ready for a hike 
for backpacking is to go backpacking. <laughs> you'll beat the hell out of yourself, but when you come back, you'll be ready to go. <laughs> sounds stupid, doesn't it? But that's, uh, that's really the best way to get in shape for this thing. It's just to go out there and do it. I mean, you can do st stair machines, you can, you know, do a lot of walking, do a lot of jogging, or you could just sit on your butt all the time, like I do, and not do a damn thing until it's time to go, and then you, well, you know how that goes. Um, I'm happy to be here. Here meaning California, for one thing. Um, I loved my trip up to Oregon, um to see the eclipse and to go backpacking with friends and all that and it was wonderful but it was oregon <laughs> it wasn't california and you know normally i would be so so what but i uh, i'm a california guy um well this is my campsite that'll explain a lot right there here's my little tent on a nice granulated granite not dirt really so you can mess around down there and come out not too dirty it'll just rinse right off i've got uh, a nice little granite entry to the water over there can't see too well but it's solid granite it's clean so when i uh, did my post trail cleaning i just went on there and took off all my clothes because there's nobody here and i can do whatever i want took off all my clothes got cleaned cleaned my clothes and uh, set up my tent and so here you are um granite that's that's key granite is wonderful here i am standing barefoot on nice clean granite i've got flat clean granite for my chair to sit on um i've been meaning to do uh, an update on my chair review that uh um these chairs are awesome as long as you're in California where the ground is hard. The ground down there is hard. I could sit right on that ground, no problem. I sit right on this granite, no problem. Um, you bring this thing to Oregon and everywhere I tried to sit down, it would go in an inch or the, the legs would go in an inch or so because the ground was just so soft. I love California. I love this place. Look at this view. Uh, on top of everything else that makes me really happy to be here. It was a perfect hike. Um, I understood what I was in for and I knew it was going to be really hard for me. And I saved just enough energy to get up here. Uh, I wish I had a little more, but I made it up here. With enough energy to <laughs> continue the work that you have to do once you get into camp, which is substantial. But in the end... After all that drudgery, after all that work, all the sweating on that hot trail, I got this little spot all to myself. Uh, I can hear waterfalls back there. That'll keep me company t tonight. Um, I don't know if these terraces are still here. Uh, what I see is a big marsh. <laughs> uh, I'll go up high and see if, any, if there's any pools there. But I think the... Um, the terraced pools is over with. Um, hopefully I'll be able to insert a picture of what I saw in the book way back when, and pretty much what I saw the first time I came here. Um, it wasn't what I thought it would be, but there were clearly terraces here. There's also snow over there. So I'm um, at the snow level. Uh, so if I need anything kept cool, I'll be able to do that. Um, one thing this campsite lacks is shade, but right now we got clouds, which is even better than shade. And I got this one big tree that I'm sitting under to uh, get even more shade. But I'm feeling good. It's a very warm day. So uh, this shade and these clouds means that it's just perfect. <laughs> uh, normally, uh, coming into camp... Uh, Really, I, well, I normally come in later. That's another thing I'm really happy about. I had a plan. <laughs> uh, get out of town by 9, get on the trail by 12, get here by 5. I didn't get out of town by 9, but it was close. But I did get on the trail before noon, and I ended up here before 5. It was around 4.30 or so. Yay! So that means three hours before sunset. That means lounging. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling comfortable, getting clean. Oh, God, I love this. And if you asked me a couple hours ago, do you love this? 
I would have said no because I was not loving it. But this, you hear a lot of YouTube hikers say, this is why we do it. Well, this is why I do it. I do it so I can get to a beautiful place like this that is all my own. I don't know why other people do it, but that's why I do it. I talk to civilians, as we call them, and they say, oh, you must love, love to walk. And I'm thinking, walk? Jesus, I hate walking. Are you kidding? <laughs> I hate walking. Uh, the hiking part of backpacking, I don't like that part of backpacking. This is the part of backpacking that I like. Huh? Yeah, this is, this is the way to live. So, I don't just walk to walk. I go backpacking to go to special places and enjoy them. And I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm up on the high rock above my little camp. Get the best view here. It's Alpenglow time. And this is weird. It's pink. Strange light we have here. Man, is it beautiful. Okay, I just gotta sit and wait a few more minutes for my food to get ready. Oop, that's my alarm. We're gonna give another five minutes. Oh, oh yeah. Don't you wish you were me? <laughs> oh, this is nice stuff. Let's take a look at the distant view there. Sorry about the alarm. I just can't keep a steady hand and turn it off at the same time. Look at that distant view. Isn't that cool? All right, we'll set that thing up. Cool. Uh, sorry about that. I just happened to turn on the uh, movie thing and three ducks just flew into my view screen and then a mosquito landed on my wrist and I had to swat them. It's just so pretty here. I have to record a little bit of this. I assume those are mergansers over there. They're always mergansers. I'll check them out in a little bit. But I gotta start eating soon. Sunset over my little ridge here. Right about where that contrail is. So it's going to get dark pretty quick. But my god, is it pretty now. I just took a picture of this scene here, and it came out real nice. It's never the same with the video. But man, this is pretty. <laughs> okay, I got just a few more bites of food left, but the, the light is just too fantastic to, to uh, let go. But I'm going to have to let go. I got mosquitoes all over my fingers. Yeah. The distant colors just keep getting darker and darker. And meanwhile, it's awfully dark, I don't know if you can see it. There are bats skimming the water for insects. A whole bunch of them. And since the, uh, the lake is reflecting the sky here, it's pretty easy for me to see them. This is a beautiful spot, man. It's all mine. Oh, me and the bats. Well, good evening. It's around 11 o'clock. All is well. Had a great day, and I'm actually pretty excited just to crawl into the tent here. The, um, the saga of the uh, sleeping apparatus is still ongoing. 
Um, I brought my uh, 50 degree bag with me. Again, <laughs> did not bring the 30 degree bag with me because it's been it's been so hot down in Sacramento and it's pretty warm up here. It's 63 in the tent right now. Now that's a good uh, 10 degrees warmer than um, anything this bag has seen. <laughs> um, so I, I brought my little um, La Fume um, 45 degree bag. It's it's pretty useless. It's very, very thin. <laughs> but uh, it'll be the bottom liner so I don't have to be in direct contact with the pad. And should it get cold, I can mummy it up and then put the uh, quilt on top of that. But um, I have a feeling that uh, today, tonight is going to be just the temperature range that this quilt is built for. So I should be pretty comfortable in here. And hopefully I should be able to sleep. Um, tomorrow I am planning to take it easy. I uh, beat myself up pretty good today. Uh, pretty, pretty tired. But I should be able to wander over to uh, Lake Number 9. It's half a mile away, something like that. <clears throat> and um, hike around the lake here, get some views, because there, there's some, some pretty spectacular views. In um, the morning, it should be pretty nice. Um, okay, over and out. Well, good morning. Good morning from beautiful Top Lake. Very strange morning already. Um, I woke up when the uh, sun blasted my tent at 8 o'clock and looked up and saw just this little cloud on the horizon there. And by the time I got out of bed, <laughs> the little cloud expanded to cloud cover. Uh, the sun breaks through every now and then. When the sun breaks through, it's hot. <laughs> and uh, when the sun goes away, it's cold because it's breezy. Um, so it's a really weird morning, but I got my cup of coffee here and I'm going to start waking up and I'll, I'll probably be peeling off clothes and putting them back on again. Crazy stuff. But at least the breeze is keeping the mosquitoes away. There was uh, mosquitoes out and about uh, at dawn when I got up to pee. <clears throat> a beautiful day. I love the clouds. Um, I like uh, a little bit of coolness in my mountain experience. Oh, here it comes. Oh, it's getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I gotta take off my jacket. I'll check in later. Well, I got myself a nice shady spot here. This is really the only reasonable shady spot around. <laughs> uh, and it'll vanish uh, when the sun is high. Uh, the sun has managed to rise above the clouds, which are coming and going, but uh, generally not too threatening. There could be a drop of rain here or there, maybe a thunder shower at some point, but not too worried about it right now. When the sun gets too high, I'll just uh, take my little hike over to Lake Number Nine and uh, see what it looks like because I've never been over there. Um, and I'm kind of really enjoying this. Uh, coming up uh, when it's really hot in the summertime, uh, it can be really hot and oppressive even up here when it's. Uh, you know, I'm up here just, just above the tree line. There's hardly any trees around. So the sun can just really bear down on you. With uh, a little bit of breeze and occasional clouds, it uh, really makes it a nicer experience. Plus it's prettier. Just uh, you know, the pretty blue sky is nice, but I like seeing the puff clouds blowing by and all that entails. And the sound of the wind, like that. Anyway, just finishing up my second cup of coffee and running out of things to do, so uh, maybe I'll be hiking sooner than later. Anyway, that's enough for now. I'm way on the high end of the lake here. I did a poop walk and ended up just kept on going. I found this little rainforesty area here. It's very pretty. There's a lake out there. I'm gonna get a view of the terracing as best I can and get back to camp.
Well, you can see that there is some terracing. The, the two closest pools are higher than the lake level, but not by much. I think the rest is just marsh and areas of reed. You can see very reedy sections like over there. That might have been a separate terrace before the reeds took over. I mean, there might be water there now, just buried under the reeds. I think the, uh, it seems that the drought really accelerated this, the, uh, the, the grass encroaching on shallow lakes. Because there seemed to be an awful lot of that activity last summer. So maybe those terraces will come back, I don't know. But it's still an interesting spot. And it's all mine. I'm so grateful. I really love this. White tail feathers, but not a bald eagle. What was that? Here's my little campsite over there. Can't quite see any sign of it, but it's right there. I'm on the move. Doing a little hike to lake number nine. It is not far away. According to my mapping stuff, it's just over that tiny little ridge there. And uh, no more than a hundred feet in elevation below where I'm at now. Uh, the tricky part is I have to get around the outlet, which is marshy and full of green stuff. But the higher I can remain while doing that, the better. So, see you at lake number nine. Lake number nine. It's a, it's a beautiful little lake. It's deep enough. Nice uh, water access here and there. Looks like a good swimming lake. I'm gonna take off some clothes and at least uh, soak my ankle. My ankle's hurting a little bit. I can't tell if it's old man pain or uh, the beginning of a sprained ankle. Just can't tell the difference. And it also has a top of the world look here. Nice place. I'm going to find a comfortable spot and, uh, well, be comfortable. <clears throat> well, I couldn't be much happier. There's just nothing like taking a little stroll to a little neighboring mountain lake, soaking your feet, enjoying a beautiful view. And knowing that it's all mine. Again, it's all mine. I haven't seen anyone since uh, um, those two women I saw below the lake. Um, below Barrett's Lake, about a mile and a half below. Loves the little puff clouds. It's just a beautiful day. The sun is hot. The breeze is cool. Sitting in the shade is comfortable. Actually, sitting in the sun is comfortable. I'm sitting in the sun right now, but my, my feet are in the cold water. That helps. Oh, isn't this pretty? God, I love this. This, this hike uh, really illustrated how much I hate walking but love backpacking. I was miserable all the way up on that trail. And uh, it wasn't until I spotted the campsite I spotted the tent spot, you know, I, 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 I told myself, okay, my tent's going here. Right then, I just started, I, this little smile came onto my face and all the drudgery of the trail disappeared and turned into, oh, I'm in home now. <laughs> Yay. Okay, here's one of these soaring birds I've been seeing constantly but cannot manage to spot. I'm going to get the guy this time. There he is. It's a raven or something, something black. Although I just can't tell. When I get home, I can get a better look at it. But as I'm sitting here, it's just a dot in the sky. I'm zoomed all the way in. And he's going away. Come on, turn, dude.
and maybe he's just drifting. Beautiful. Come back. Oh, he might just be stationary in the wind. Does not seem to be moving. Okay, now he seems to be moving. Oh, that's pretty. Well, I'm not going to fully explore the lake here. No point, really. If you really have to stay here, you'll find the campsite. I have uh, high hopes for this area there. Um, I haven't seen a campsite yet, I have to say. I'm sure there's one here somewhere, but I haven't seen one. Over here, that's a great water access there. Big rocks and some trees. There's good um, potential for a good sheltered campsite there. But uh, I don't see a campsite on the shoreline here. Doesn't mean there's not one. It means I don't see it. I'm heading back to the lake, and my uh, left ankle actually hurts, so... I'm going to eat some lunch, have some more Motrin, and hope that'll make the pain go away. Because I don't want to be stomping downhill on a bad ankle. It won't be good tomorrow. Okay, well, we'll see how it goes. I'll know, I'll know more when I get back to the camp. Okay, well, I'm, I'm back at camp now. I uh, decided that I needed to sit down, um, take care of my ankle, and do everything that I needed to do to make sure that could happen. And my God, a lot of things needed to happen in order for me to sit down for 15 minutes straight. I needed to get water, I needed to uh, windproof my camp, which means you know, everything that's not nailed down is going to blow away, so you got to nail it down. Um, on the way back uh, to the campsite, I went by that snowbank and uh, was able to break off a big chunk of it and poke a hole through it with my uh, hiking pole and carry a big chunk of ice back here. So, I'm, uh, I've got a little bag of ice down there for my ankle, and uh, hope it gets better because it does not feel good. It seems to be alright walking on the nice flat level parts. It's the unlevel parts, <laughs> which is most of everything around here. That's the problem. Uh, so, I uh, got a, a dinner going. Um, I have these uh, Mountain House single serving dinners, which are too small for a full meal. So I'm having uh, one for lunch and one for dinner, and that ought to fortify me for the day. Uh, so I got uh, dinner steeping here, i got to set a timer, um, and I'm going to take another big Motrin with lunch, and take another one with dinner, take one in the morning, hopefully everything will be okay. It's approaching that magic hour again. It's so pretty right now. The air is getting more calm. And I'm thinking that right now I should be walking over towards the edge there. Maybe uh, on top of the uh, ridge to the left. Um, but my food's ready to eat. And I don't want it to get cold. So I, will, I might try that uh, afterward. And see if I can get a long view. You can see a long way from there. You should be able to see all the way to the coastal range. There's nothing in between me and the coastal range except for those few trees over there. Very nice here. smoky. I can see the coastal mountains. And maybe the last of the Shasta. It's quite a view from here. This is really something. Way 
pretty far away. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. I just got back from that spectacular sunset hike. If I had followed my instincts and left um, when I when my food was ready and I started eating, I would have had a, just an amazing sunset experience. But now I'm back here looking at this incredible view, watching the bats skim in the water. Just mellowing this evening. It is just too beautiful here. Believe it or not, I hiked back unaided with no light. Ah, great night. It was just magical. Uh, the uh, colors all, all evening were just beautiful. And then, and then it went straight into a, a beautiful moonlit evening. Uh, the moon's bright enough now that I can walk around unaided without uh, lights across the, uh, the granite because it's so, so easily seen. You know, um, it's a little cooler tonight. Um, I should sleep pretty well. Slept pretty well last night, and the um, the 50 degree quilt seemed to do just fine. But then I woke up uh, late, with a big cold spot, and and just uh, decided to to throw the other bag on as well. So probably be cooler even still tonight. So I'll probably do both. Uh, of these super lightweight bags and that'll be pretty I'll be pretty comfortable so over and out for uh, night two uh, absolutely fantastic trip so far it's just been so beautiful and tranquil good night well good morning again it is day three <sighs> For once, I can report that I had a really good night's sleep. Oh, <laughs> I, I, got, I woke up several times, but each time it, I, I knew it was from a deep sleep. Um, I did the same thing last night. I woke up several times. I wasn't sure if I had slept or what, but uh, got through the day without any symptoms of sleeplessness. But last night, I could tell that each time I came to, I was... Uh, rising from a deep sleep and, and, and a deep dream one it's kind of scary uh, but woke up to yet another different kind of day um, woke up at eight o'clock sharp with the sun blasting on the tent again but this time it wasn't followed up by overcast and nice cool clouds so the sun is blasting hard now and I'm sitting in the shade um, saving up my sun exposure for when I hike out because I'll get plenty of sun then um, the, the, the winds were calm when I got up, but it's a little breezy now. 
I'm just sitting here with my cup of coffee, enjoying the beautiful day, and plotting out my slow departure. I'm not in a hurry to leave. Um, I have just enough food <laughs> to get out of here without being hungry. But then I'm going to drive real fast to find something to eat. <laughs> um, I have a big handful of, I have a big breakfast and a big handful of jerky and a small handful of gorp, and that should be enough. Uh, leaving, plan is to leave at about 1, get to the car at about 4. That's the plan. I think I should be able to, to do that. What a great trip this has been. I've uh, seen such beautiful sights every evening. It was so pretty. The hike up to the uh, ridge yesterday. I'm so glad I did that. Even though I missed the sunset, I got to see the after effects of the of the sunset and the distant, long, long view. That's what I really like about this side of Desolation. Uh, here, uh, Twin Lakes, um, not many other places. Uh, you can see a long way you know, once you get to the, you know, the the edge of the lake, and you can look over. You can see a long way. Ah, uh, so no more babbling. I'm just going to drink my coffee here. on the ridge top again. Uh, I was beyond uh, that high point over there last night. I just, uh, I'm just out and about for my morning poop walk and ended up near the ridge, near the ridge top. So I decided to come up and see the rest of it. But uh, here's a note for people uh, looking for a place to poop around a desolation area above the tree line. You can see where I'm at here, there aren't a lot of trees. That means there's not a lot of soil. Most of the soil you find is is uh, granulated granite and bits of rock, and it's really hard to dig into that. The uh, and even the green stuff down there, um, the the root systems are so dense, it's very hard to break through. The, the roots in the top two inches of the of the ground, it's very difficult to break through. Even with my little titanium um, shovel, uh, trowel, whatever they call it. Um, it's, I use that here because it's very small. It doesn't move a lot of dirt, but it's really hard and rigid and it breaks through hard ground. That'll break the uh, regular plastic shovels. Um, however, uh, the places I found that work are like this, right there. That's where I dug my hole. Um, there was uh, a pile of snow here recently. The ground is still quite moist, not not wet, but you can easily dig down, uh, you know, a foot through um, moist sand, basically. Uh, so, and my other poop walk, I ended up way over there because I wanted to get a high view of the lake from the terrace angle, and I found a similar spot. Everything else was too hard. So, there's a there's a tip for you. Oh, I'm sorry to be leaving this place. It's nice. Checking in one last time here from Top Lake. I managed to get everything all packed up and I kind of wanted to just pack a couple of things and then take a break, but I just kept packing and packing and packing. Now everything is done, and now I'm taking my break. <laughs> everything is packed except the chair that I'm sitting in and uh, the things that uh, need to go in the very last when sealing up the pack. Been a great trip. Um, everything has been just marvelous, um, except for my ankle that was acting weird. I think it's okay. I mean, I've given it several doses of. Uh, 
Motrin since uh, it started acting up and that's the most I can do for it and I iced it a bit and I relaxed it a lot and it might just it, maybe it wasn't the beginnings of a sprain maybe it was just um, the beginnings of um, arthritic pain I'm getting little bits of arthritis in all my joints and maybe that was a new one I'm just sitting here watching the birdies flying around feeling the cool breeze enjoying a little bit of shade because I'm not going to have any of that pretty soon. And I want to take just one more calm moment to look around the lake. Because it's, it's just lovely. I really enjoyed this day. And still, I've not seen anybody since the uh, day I hiked in. What a great place. The mosquitoes were nice, even. There was always a breeze to keep them in check. Um, there weren't any um, uh, invasive critters, even. There's a few ground squirrels, chipmunks wandering around here. Um, when I, uh, when was that? Uh, when I took my hike to Lake Number Nine yesterday, I made a little bag of goodies in case I got hungry on the way. And I left it out on sitting on my chair, so it was uh, left unattended for over an hour, and it was unmolested. And the chipmunks that I'm seeing running around here, they seem to be doing their own thing and not worrying about what I'm doing, or not looking for food, not begging. So, uh, nice place. <laughs> it was very accommodating. I really enjoyed it here. No bears, a few deer tracks. Um, however, the last time I saw a bear in desolation, it was on the hike down the Barrett Lake Jeep Trail. You might want to take a look at that uh, footage. Um, luckily, that was the time that I decided that I was going to start carrying my camera just tied onto my um, chest strap so that I could immediately grab it and turn it on and start shooting if I see something really, really cool. Like a bear walking towards me. I had that camera out and filming in five seconds. Literally. I mean, from the moment I saw the bear, to the uh, time I started filming was about five seconds. And in that time I realized, hey, this guy is walking towards me and he's still coming. <laughs> um, I later learned that bears have a very acute sense of smell and an acute sense of hearing. They don't see very well. So he didn't see me. Um, I saw him before he saw me. But the moment I said, this, this guy is coming right at me, just talking to myself, he heard that from a good ways away, turned and ran for his life. Um, which was good, because, you know, I don't want to encounter a bear closely. I just like looking at them. So, I took bear precautions up here, even though I just couldn't imagine a bear would come all the way up here. I don't know, you just never know. So, And I was looking at the food that I had, and I needed that food. <laughs> I would have been miserable if I, if I was stuck here without any food. Anyway, I'm babbling now. It's probably really close to departure time, so my final relaxation here should end now. Farewell, Top Lake. Well, that's Top Lake back there. That large tree there is where my camp was. But I didn't do a lot of video on the way up because I was just miserable. But I'm not so miserable hiking downhill. So uh, here's the cross country route. Of course, I dropped my poles. Uh, here's the cross country route going down. It's a lovely route. Of course, there's no trail, but I'd be shocked if I didn't find a bit of trail here and there and some trail markers. But it's pretty, pretty easy cross country hiking. I got a ridge to my left, I got a creek to my right. As long as I stay in between the two, I'll hit my target. I like off-trail hiking. Although it, it, it scares me because I, uh, I'm so instilled with the fear of what if something happens while you're off-trail. And now that I got my little Delorme device, I am feeling much better about that. Cute little flowers. Um, this was the first real test with the device. 
I brought it um, up with me to uh, uh, to the, the hike in Oregon, just because I realized that now I have the thing, I can't ever not bring it. What if I need it? What if somebody I see along the way needs it, and I don't have it? I'd be very upset with myself, so I have to carry it every single time I go in the backcountry. And there's lovely Lawrence Lake. I really like that lake. That's got some of the best uh, Alpen Glow going. In fact, if you look at my YouTube page, the big banner picture was the Alpen Glow at Lawrence Lake a couple years ago. And I'm headed to the far left side of that lake. And beyond, uh, I need to go below the lake to cross the creek to get back to the trail. So I'm not going directly to the lake at all. Lovely hike. Well, I'm below Lawrence Lake at the creek, getting ready to cross it, getting on the trail back down to Barrett Lake. This is really pretty here. I love this little creek. But I uh, managed to follow the proper route all the way down. Much better going down than going up. And brought me right here to the easiest crossing and the closest uh, uh, point access to the trail on the other side of the creek. So here we go. Okay, I've made it to uh, the trail on the other side of the creek. I'm going that way. If you are coming up towards Lawrence Lake, but plan on bypassing Lawrence Lake and go to Top Lake or Lake Number Nine instead, like I did, this is where you want to go. This is where you want to leave the trail and cross the creek. It's very easy here, and it's very hard in other places. Save yourself a lot of time if you do it right here instead of going to the lake first. All right. I'm on the, uh, the trail that just dead ends into Lawrence Lake. This trail marker here tells you that to the left, oh, well, they put the wilderness sign back up. Uh, to the right there goes to Lawrence Lake. To the left here goes up to uh, Lake Number Five, Lake Number Three, and such. Alrighty, but me, I'm going down. Well, I'm up above the Barrett's Lake campground here. I've never even seen the, you know, the, the real camping area. I've never even been over there. That's where you hang out. I guess all this other stuff here is parking. Well, that's the overview. It took me less than 40 minutes to get here from my camp at Top Lake. I'm sitting down, taking a break. I'm about halfway done. Um, I need to eat some food and drink some water. Feeling all right. Had a casualty though. Can you see this? That's my, it's one of my tent poles. That's, um, it's convenient that I can, uh, um, to tent poles, uh, hiking poles. It's convenient that the, um, Osprey packs have this thing where you can just attach your hiking poles while you're uh, wearing your pack. Um, I dropped the poles as you, as I often do when I stop and uh, 
picked it up and it was covered in dust from um, you know, this dusty trail. And so I just whacked the handles together to, to, to get the dust to jump off and it broke. <laughs> it just snapped. Uh, it, it clearly was on its way to breaking before that, I'm sure. So I'm down to one pole uh, and it, it's awkward. Um, anyway, the hike's going very well. Um, I'll be just fine. And I have an extra pole, um, so I should be able to find it and not have to buy another pole to go hiking. Damn it. All right, that's enough babble. Back to Dark Lake, back on pavement. Huh, what an interesting hike this was. This had the potential to be one of the great exit hikes of all time, because I was feeling really good, I was feeling strong. It's mostly downhill, but uh, oh, less than halfway down, uh, one of my hiking poles broke. Very inconvenient. A little while later, my left ankle really started hurting. Not a good time to have just one hiking pole. One hiking pole is almost no better than zero hiking poles. <clears throat> really worried that I sprained it, because it was getting, it was hurting. But it was responding to rest. It was enjoying the rest. Um, uh, near around the last mile or so, the trail got level and soft, and the ankle started hurting so much. And then I bumped into a couple hiking up, first people I'd seen in two days, and chatted with them for a while. And when we were done, we went our separate ways. And for a moment, I forgot that I had an injured ankle. In fact, right now, it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, so, I did not sprain my ankle. I stressed it, and uh, the, the bits of uh, relaxation I gave it uh, and the Motrin I took this morning kept the swelling in check so it didn't hurt so bad. So it's not, nothing wrong. I just need to put it on ice, rest for a couple of days, and uh, <laughs> earlier I was talking about uh, one way to uh, prep for a backpacking trip is just to go backpacking. <laughs> Throw some weight on your back, go out on a trail, and suffer. And after some time, you'll feel better. And that's, a, this is, that's exactly how this trip was shaping up. I, I feel really strong today in every way except for my ankle. Um, so, for the joints, that uh, technique just isn't too effective. That's how I hurt my knee climbing Mount Walston. It also wasn't sprained. It was just overstressed. Except for I had to go down 3,000 feet in five miles while I was injured without hiking poles. God, did that hurt. <laughs> so I just kept hurting it and that didn't help. But I'm doing okay now. All I gotta do is do this last little bit of uphill back to the car and hope it starts. Well, I'm just getting underway here. Got back to the car, all is well. Um, I was able to clean myself properly and get naked doing it without anybody around. And nobody goes to this trailhead. Um, this is supposed to be the, uh, the um, trailhead for going over the pass. Um, I mean, it escapes me all of a sudden. But everybody knows that the, the other parking lot, the newer parking lot, it's closer, <laughs> so nobody comes here. The only reason to come here is to hike the hike I just did. Um, I've got no food. I've got a, a handful of nuts, and I'm gonna be hungry pretty soon, so I'm kinda hurrying to get out of here. Um, the uh, hike ended well, <laughs> despite uh, being a little scary there for a while. Uh, my ankle seems to be just fine. Uh, it just recovered all by itself. Um, a couple of rests, some decent downhill traveling, and it was fine. 
in case you're worried that I'm driving while doing this, I'm, I'm going five miles an hour. This is a, this is a camping area. Um, well, what a trip. What a trip. Uh, I cannot wait to look at the footage and the stills that I took. Uh, one of those sunset pictures looked like one of the nicest pictures I've ever taken. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Okay, I'm getting to the main road here, so I better finish it up. Uh, I'm hoping to be going again soon. I don't know um, how my make sure everything heals properly, but maybe in another week I'll be I'll be going out again. So in the meantime, happy trails.